Some of the biggest names in music gathered last fall to honor a legendary Hollywood composer. Lucky Tracy Smith was there. Not long ago, at Warner Brothers Movie Lot in Burbank, on a scoring stage named for Clint Eastwood, a once-in-a-lifetime gathering of musical giants. Among them, trumpeter Arturo Sandoval, jazz great Herbie Hancock, and the legendary Quincy Jones. They came together to honor one man and re-record one of his best-known songs. One, two, three, four. The theme from the Peter Dunn TV show by the great Henry Mancini. The original song, recorded in 1958, helped make Henry Mancini a household name. More on that later. But back then, Henry was just Hank, a 34-year-old TV music composer. And his piano player was a 26-year-old kid named Johnny Williams. Johnny has since moved on. But on this day, the maestro himself came back and took a seat at his Steinway Grand. What does it feel like to play it again? Take a bicycle, get back on. Is that what it felt like? It's great. Yeah. John Williams is the only one left from the original recording session. Well, Brady Hank was known, but he wasn't the Henry Man singer that we know now. That night, he was Hank, who worked at the studio, we knew him as a buddy and so on. And you were Johnny. I was Johnny, yes, of course. <laughs> Covered with hair, by the way. Oh, sure. Well, that, that's good many yeah. happy years ago. What do you think it is about this song? That it transcends? Well, it's insistent, isn't it? It must be the great piano player. Don't you think? I do think. I think so. Oh, of course, the piano, but there's so much more to it. In 1958, Henry Mancini was a noted film composer at Universal Studios, who'd already gotten an Oscar nod for his score for the Glenn Miller story. But he'd just been laid off in a company cutback. So when producer Blake Edwards approached him about scoring a TV show about a detective, he quickly said yes. With a wife, a son, and twin girls, Mancini needed the money. Hi, Bailey. Huh? September rain does have some power. Yeah, I'm not talking about that kind of heat. What are you talking about? The show itself was well received. But the jazz-inspired theme song? That was a smash. I think when Hank wrote that piece of music, he had, I presume, he had no idea that the effect it was going to have. Greg Field is a Grammy-winning music producer. You hear it all the time, it's licensed for commercials. It's just that little, you know, incredible bass line that Henry came up with in that simple melody, and it, it continues to resonate. He couldn't understand why it was so popular? Uh, no. Because it was so simple. Simple but brilliant. The Peter Gunn album won the first ever Grammy for Album of the Year. But even with all the success, twin sisters Felice and Monica Mancini say their dad stayed humble. He was a very quiet, reserved kind of guy. Forget when he had some red wine. But, but his peers really admired him. And you ask any one of them that are alive today that said, what do you most admire about Henry? And they just said, he was one of the nicest men we've ever known. They don't talk about the music, that kind of speaks for itself. But as far as a human being, they just said that no one comes close. And as his reputation soared, Mancini was able to help lift up some of his friends, John Williams, of course, and Quincy Jones, in an era when it was nearly impossible for him to get into film scoring. And Mancini himself went on to compose some of the best-loved, most-played film music of a generation. There was the haunting Moon River from 1961's Breakfast at Tiffany's. 
1962, there was the quirky Baby Elephant Walk from Atari. that same year, The Days of Wine and Roses, from the film of the same name. Mancini seemed to have a talent for creating music that became not just popular, but indelible. Crazy world, full of crazy contradictions, like a child. And by 1994, when he died from pancreatic cancer at age 70, he'd amassed four Oscars, 20 Grammys, and a kind of musical immortality. You can go virtually anywhere in the world and go up to a 10-year-old and say, but up, but up, but up, and they immediately know it. And I can't imagine another composer that has created music that generation to generation, decade to decade, keeps resonating with people. <laughs> Producer Greg Field, who also happens to be married to Monica Mancini, set out to re-record some of his father-in-law's biggest hits for a new album that'll come out later this year, starting with the Peter Dunn session. Quincy Jones wouldn't have missed it. What is it like to be here in this studio recording Mancini's music again? It's like having him back in my life, you know. He was a very special person in my life, as, as were his two twin daughters. We used to kick my booty all the time on the pool table. <laughs> no, that's my family. That's really family. And uh, all the Herbie, John Williams, we just go all the way back. You know. So is this like a big family reunion? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And after all the hugs and the photos and the warm-ups, one of the greatest studio bands of all time was ready to lay it down. One, two, three, Peter Gunn theme that endures. Like anything that endures. The composer did it right. <laughs> and more than 60 years later, it can still raise the roof. Somewhere in heaven, Henry Mancini must be smiling. <laughs>